couch Dogs, me, guitar lessons Hey there, Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? I'm Asaf Levavi and I welcome you to the first in the 10 lesson chord theory course right here on Lickin' Riff called Finally Understanding Chords. And by the end of the 10 lessons, you're gonna understand chord theory anywhere on the neck. You'll be able to find any chord you want and build any chord you want. We're not gonna just learn shapes. We're gonna learn chords in depth and understand how they work on the guitar and actually in music in general. So to do that, we need to know the chord structure, the very basic structure of minor and major chords. So even if you do know the shapes of the chords, it still doesn't mean that you know why they work and why they look the way they do. And this is why this lesson is very, very, very important. Now, if you haven't watched the introduction video to the course, I strongly suggest that you do because I introduced this table, the table of embellishments. It's gonna help us along the way and we're gonna refer to it again and again. So if you have no idea what's going on here, I suggest you watch the introduction video. The links to the entire course videos are in the description. You can always come back to this lesson. Anyway, let's start. You all know major and minor chords. Okay? Minor and major chords anywhere on the neck uh, are built the same way and uh, represent the same, uh, the same notes out of their respective scales. We're not gonna discuss uh, scale chords, we're gonna treat each chord as its own, uh, as its own um, representation, let's say. Uh, what do I mean by that? I mean that if we're talking about A, we're gonna refer to the A scale when we talk. We're gonna talk about the respective scale. So if we're talking about A and E, we're not talking about um, any uh, particular scale that holds those chords. We're talking about the A scale when we're talking about the A chord, and we're talking about the E scale when we're talking about the E chord, okay, respectively. So um, enough chit chat, let's start. Let's take the E chord, okay? That's one voicing on the guitar. That's one chord voicing. The other chord voicing on the guitar is the G chord voicing. And these two voicings, and I'll explain what I mean by voicings in a second, are the only two voicings on the guitar, okay? It seems hard to accept it. It seems impossible because you have so many chords and so many shapes, but these are the two chord voicings, the two basic voicings that lead us to everything else. So the E chord voicing and the G chord voicing are the most important voicings to get to know in order to build uh, our knowledge on. So the G chord voicing is uh, the right uh, voicing in terms of order of notes. And the E voicing is kind of like the guitar voicing. It's kind of the, uh, the you know, the when you recognize, okay? You recognize somebody playing a guitar and you can hear that they're playing basic chords. Usually they're playing E shaped voicing. So uh, let's start breaking it down. How is a chord built? A chord is built by its root note, which is uh, mostly, most of the time, its bass note. Okay, um, sometimes you have um, alternated bass chords which have a slash in there, like A minor over G, for example, which is A minor seven, only in a different voicing. So uh, we're gonna discuss that as well. But most of the time you have the uh, root note in the bass. So for E, you have Okay, the root note is the one, the root note of its respective scale, the E major scale. So um, the next note, this one, is the five, the fifth note of the respective scale. And you always have one and five. Okay? And uh, if you've played heavy metal or uh, distorted guitar in any shape, then you probably encountered this, okay, which is, or this. Okay, a uh, power chord, either a lean one or a fat one. Now, if you have a lean power chord, you have the one and the five, okay, no third. And if you play a fat chord, then you have the one, the five, and the one again, an octave higher, which makes it the eight. So you have one, five, eight, and that's the next note. This is the one, the five, and the eight. 
Okay? And knowing where the eight is, is very important if you want to find the seven or the nine. Now, or the flat nine or the major seven. Now, uh, the next note, this one, okay, this one is the third. And that is probably the most important note of the chord. This third is the major third, okay, because this is E major and this is the major third. What does that mean? That means that this is the third note of the major scale, and that's what makes it major. The third note of a scale uh, actually tells you what the scale is, whether a minor or a major. So we have one, five, eight, three, okay? You can also say one, five, one, three, but then if you uh, treat this as one, then you won't think about it as eight, and it will be harder to, uh, you know, to find the embellishments with. So uh, one, five, eight, three. Now, if we want a minor third, the minor of the E minor scale, then all we have to do is take three down a fret, okay, from one to zero in this case, and we have the minor chord. And actually, that's the entire difference between a minor and a major chord. You have the major three or the minor three, and they're always a fret apart. The lower fret is the minor three, and the higher fret is the major three. And if we take A, for example, then uh, the third is on the second string on two, the major third, and the minor third is on one, one fret below. And we'll come back to that in a second, but let's go back to E, okay, which is the basic voicing. So we have one, five, eight, three, whether minor or major. Then we have the five again. Okay, this is very important. Remember, the next string is five. Again, it's a harmony for this. It's the same note an octave apart. And you can see it in the C chord, for example. Okay? It's the same idea. It's two frets up, but uh, three strings apart. Okay, so... And uh, as it happens, this is a B note and this is a C note. It's one fret apart anyway. So um, if I'm confusing you, I'm going to stop. Okay, this is not important. I just wanted to show you that it's the five again. It's the same note. Just listen and see that it's the same note. Anyway, so now we have one, five, eight, three, five. The last note is the one again, okay? Or the eight again. I suggest you treat it as eight, okay? So now we know the voicing. One, five, eight, three, five, eight, okay? And if you want farther proof, then play the eight here and the eight here, and you'll see it's the same note. Okay, it's the same uh, distance as here. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was gonna play C, so I played B and C together. Okay, this isn't um, an octave. So, this is the E voicing. We'll go back to that. Um, now let's talk about the G voicing. The G voicing is actually something very, very specific um, and uh, doesn't repeat itself anywhere because um, it's kind of convoluted. If you want a G voicing here, for example, you won't you won't do this. You'll just play half of the chords. So um, it's important to know this because of our next step. The next step would be to take the chord uh, down a string, down physically, and you'll see where it leads. But first, let's talk about the voicing itself. Uh, remember when I said that this voicing is the right order of notes? It's because of this. You have the one, the three, and the five, and then the one again. So it's one, three, five, eight. It's the right order of things. It's just, um, you know, one note of the chord after another. So one, three, five, eight. Then you have the three again. Okay, remember, you have three again. And in G's case, you have the eight again. So one, three, five, eight, three, eight. So um, the important thing to take away from this is this. One, three, five, eight. Now, where does that lead us? First, that leads us to G minor, because uh, if you want to play G minor here, 
if this is the three, two on the A string, and we take it down a fret, if we play the um, bottom four strings, we get G minor. Can you hear the somberness of it? Okay. But that's jumping way ahead of ourselves. Um, so let's go back to G. Okay. Um, so we have E and G. The only two voicings on the guitar, the ones that uh, base the entire chord theory for guitar. Why is that? Because E taken down, uh, down physically again, it's up musically, taken down a string becomes a minor. Now why is that? It's because all the strings on the standard tuning uh, of the guitar are tuned uh, in the same distance, okay, they're tuned five frets apart, while the second string is tuned uh, four frets apart from the uh, third string. Okay, four frets instead of five, 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 four, five. And you have to compensate for that every time you take a chord down. Um, and that's something very, very important to know. So write it down if you need to. Just uh, raise the second string by a fret whenever you take a chord down. Uh, lower the second string by a fret every time you take a chord up. I'm talking physically, not musically. We're discussing an instrument here. So um, E becomes a minor. So we need to raise the second string by one fret and we get two. So that's A, and it has the same voicing. One, five, one, okay, or eight, one, five, eight, three, okay, major third or minor third, and then five again. So, same voicing, minus one note. Then if we take this down, we get D. But remember, we have to raise the second string by a fret, so we get D, and it's the same voicing. One, five, eight, three. And if we want D minor, we take this down a fret and we get D minor. You're starting to see how this works? It's the same thing with G. G down a string becomes this. So you need to raise a fret on the second string. You get this, you get C. Same voicing. One, three, five. Eight, three. Then if you take this down, you get this, and you need to raise the second string, so you put a bar on the first string, and you get F, and it's the same voicing. One, three, five, eight. Right? Starting to see the logic behind this? It's the same thing with all the chords you're gonna play. For example, you have this chord, it doesn't really matter what it is right now, you take this down here, you raise the second string, you get this. And that explains many complicated chords. Um, they're just shapes that you know on different string sets. Sometimes it's all it is. And um, that's the trick to actually finding them and recognizing them. So uh, once again, E, A, and D are one family, G, C, and F are a second family. Um, the last piece of knowledge I'm gonna give you in this lesson, because we're done with chord structure, um, is this. F is half an E shape. If you take this chord down a fret, you'll see that you have... And if you uh, add this note, you get E. So F is half an E shape. That's very, very important to remember. You don't need to remember it now, but it never hurts to uh, recognize something along the way. And if I could prepare you for that, then why not? I'll see you in the second lesson. Uh, please don't forget to like this lesson uh, right below and leave a comment if uh, you have anything to say. I'll see you in the second lesson in which we'll talk about the sevens, the minor sevens and the major sevens and what they mean for us. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now. Enjoy.